Hello, this is Dave Ganskop, a rangeland scientist with the Agriculture Research Service at the Eastern Oregon Ag Research Center in another Eastern Oregon Ag Minute. Recently, with the help of satellites and tracking collars on cows, we have been finding out on a 24-hour basis where, when, and what our cattle are doing in large rangeland pastures. These units can track cows for weeks at a time. We've learned that cattle generally visit only 40 to 60 percent of a large pasture. This leaves one with lots of wasted grass, especially in rugged terrain. We've found that moving water tanks to the non-used areas and closing access to other water sites is the best way to move cattle to and hold them on those unused acres. Salt is not very effective at moving stock but it should still be given to balance the year-round mineral needs. Two of our most prevalent rangeland grasses, blue bunch wheatgrass and crested wheatgrass, produce durable seed stalks that can persist in bunches for up to two years. We call these bunches wolf plants and cattle really don't like to graze them. We put some tracking collars on cattle in pastures that had wolfy and clean sections and found they spent 74% of their time where bunches were clean and only 26% of their time feeding among wolf plants. We actually grew grass in the wolfy portions of the pastures while cattle were there. Controlled burning, mowing, or heavy late season grazing are three ways one can clean up wolfy pastures. This will make next year's grass more nutritious and acceptable for their cows. We tend to look at waving stands of grass in our pastures during wetter growing seasons and feel that all is well with the world. From a yield standpoint, we may get 50 to 60 percent more forage than in average years. We found that while we have a lot of grass, much of the crop is seed stalks and the grass's nutritional value quickly declines to a level that will not support cow-calf gains past early to mid-July. Management options one can use to sustain animal gains at those times include supplying supplemental protein as infrequently as every four or five days, or early weaning to get calves off the cow and onto better grass. Without a calf holding her back, mature cows should be able to sustain their weight on the low-quality forage. An obvious downside to drought is that we don't grow much grass. We've measured forage quality of grasses through wet and dry years, however, and find that nutritional quality is higher later into the growing season during dry years than in wet ones. Also, June or July rains in the dry growing season will switch grass growth on again and give us more growth. Grasses won't do that in wet years. During a drought, don't worry too much about forage quality, but try to get cattle to work over the entire pasture. Pounds of grass per acre is the limiting factor then. Use pastures with seasonal or temporary water first, and then open or close gates to perennial water to force cattle into unused pasture corners. and learn that each makes a valuable contribution to our forage base at some season. Blue bunch wheatgrass and Idaho fescue are the meat and potatoes for our region because they yield an abundance of high quality mid-season forage. Sandberg's bluegrass, bottle brush squirrel tail, and yes even cheatgrass can make good contributions too because they green up first in the spring and they respond to midsummer or early fall rains with another flush of growth. Rangelands that have a full array of grasses give us about a six week longer period of adequate nutrition for cattle than a pure stand of crested wheatgrass. For that reason, we want to take especially good care of our native rangeland pastures. I am Dave Ganskop. Thanks for being here, and we'll be back.